Hello and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're with us as we celebrate the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Please take a few minutes this evening to bring, uh, to bring your prayer sheet home with you after service today and remember in prayer all of those listed on the sheet. We thank you very much. With that, I invite the congregation please to rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We gather now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John chapter 3, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us now silently reflect upon those sins for which we would ask forgiveness. And so together we say, Most merciful God, We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated for our opening song. Here's my 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the, the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him? At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the one who is all about action. Amen. The Gospel of Mark is a gospel of action. So that's probably what I love most about the book of Mark. Mark emphasizes the deeds of Jesus Christ. So today I want to talk to you about our actions as Christians. And I know I've, you've heard me talk about this before, but we're going to talk again about how we are, how our actions as Christians affect one another. Are we self-centered, self-centered versus Christ-centered? I think this talk is timely. We just got done with our annual meeting. And the annual meeting booklet, it's so wonderful, it's so wonderfully put together. And throughout the pages of that book, it just shows people in action for Christ. St. John's would not happen without all the people in those pages that are so committed to a Christ-centered life. But in the world, it tends to focus more on self-centered. We sing lots of songs about ourselves, Sometimes when I get caught up with talking too much about myself, my, my husband will sing a Toby Keith song. He likes country music. He'll sing the song about, I want to talk about me. Have you heard that song? I want to talk about me. You want to talk about I? Yeah, he'll remind me that sometimes he wants to get in a word edge, edgewise. Or maybe you're a fan of Frank Sinatra and it's, I'll do it my way, that song, right? Those, we hear those songs and it's about ourselves. And we love those so kind of songs because we love ourselves and that's, it's not such a terrible thing. The world is full of me. It's probably why we like Facebook so much it's, or Instagram or Snapchat. It's my platform. It it's, can be about me, my opinion, my family. It's no surprise that these these places would become so popular. Since the beginning, since we were born, it was about me, right? Some of our first words were mine, mine, right? It's my toy. 
It reminds me of this past Christmas going to my mom's house, and, and we have these two great uh, niece and nephew. They're about three and four years old, and they're just a joy to have at Christmas time. And when we go and stay at mom's house um, overnight for the weekend, these two little twerps are there, and they just bring a lot of joy to our family. But TJ especially, he's the youngest, I think he's about three, is very focused on me. He's very focused on his toys, mine, and, and, and he's also very focused on my husband, Brian. He adores Brian, probably because from the moment that Brian gets there, he gives those two young children just his uh, undivided attention from the minute we get there until for the whole week and until he goes home. It's, it's all about spending time with those kids. TJ loves Brian so much that TJ thinks that Brian is his boy. It's funny, um, we'll be sleeping upstairs early in the morning and we'll hear TJ asking Grandma, Grandma, where, where's my boy? And Brian isn't a real you know, early riser kind of person, but boy, the minute that he hears, where's my boy? Brian is quick to jump out of bed and go to his beck and call. So from the very beginning of little ages, it's all about me. And it really doesn't ever end. Maybe we, we are in a little, we're a little more subtle as we get older, but it's still kind of our sinful nature to be very consumed with ourselves. So this is what I find so interesting about the gospel text today. When I first read the gospel text, I always try to insert myself into, you know, where am I in this text? No surprise, as I'm selfish, just like we all are. I, I'm, I'm looking for where am I? And I always like to put myself in, like, the hero, like, the good guy spot, right? And that's just tendency, you, you want to be the good guy. But I come to decide that I am not the good guy here. I am the unclean spirit. Now, yes, this particular text is talking about someone that's demon-possessed. I'm not saying that I'm demon-possessed, but I do believe that we are all unclean in one fashion or another. But Jesus is different. Jesus comes in, this is his first activities in this text. This is his first activities in his ministry. He gathers his, his first disciples, and then what does he do? He goes to the synagogue and immediately teaches. He, he gives of himself. He gives of his time, of his energy. Nowhere in Scripture do I find Jesus gathers his guys, goes to the recliner in the living room, grabs a bag, bag of chips, and you know, goes on a four-hour Netflix binge. I, I, don't, I can't find that anywhere in Scripture. Christ is all about giving of himself. And it, it's such a, an example of just selfless, selfless behavior. So what does God expect of me? I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not the main character. I am the unclean one. So what really is his expectations? So what does the Bible say? Well, right off the bat, in our first commandments, God teaches us he wants us to occupy. He wants us to occupy him to occupy the main position in our lives, the main one. So he wants us to love God and love our neighbors, and that's it. It's simple. That is what we as Christians are to do. So Paul also gives some scripture around this. In 2 Timothy, he says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. 
People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Well, that's encouraging. This scripture, the beginning is, is the emphasis. People will be lovers of themselves. So lovers of self is kind of like the main sewer line that all the other garbage flows out of. The main sewer line is self-love. And this, and this is interesting because the world teaches us just the opposite of this. And of course we know Satan is the father of lies, so the world wants us to be like, you know, you got to take time for yourself. You got to, you got to, you know, you, you got to give yourself. You deserve, you deserve. And we see that all over, plastered all over the media. But scripture says otherwise. It says, love God and love your neighbor. That is what we're here for. Now, is it earning us some sort of salvation? Will we get some big mansion in heaven because of our love for our neighbor? No. It's, it's, no, we won't. So then what, then, then why? Because our neighbor needs us. Because it benefits our neighbor. Philippians 2 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. We are charged to proclaim the gospel and embody that gospel by what we do. People will see and hear and feel God's love through us. I have a video, if I have the clicker, maybe, I can show you quick, of what could selflessness look like? So we'll play that quick. It's really short. As unclean as we are, we as Christians have been made clean. Christ came in and made us clean. So what will we do with that gift in 2021? It's so much fun at the beginning of the year to think of what our life for the next year will look like. And I think especially we sit here with those exciting thoughts of being able to maybe not wear masks and be together in close proximity and be able to hug and handshake and do all those things that we're longing for. Throughout scripture, it talks of good works. It tells us if we are his workmanship, Christ created us for good works. That was Ephesians 2.10. Or 
1 Peter 4, it says, As each have received a gift, use it to serve one another. Or Romans 12, 11, I love this one. Do not be slothful in zeal, but fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Our charge is to embody, proclaim and embody the gospel by helping others see the love of Christ in tangible ways. This is hard to think about. It's easy to think about self. It's hard sometimes to give ourselves away. But I know, and there's many of you sitting out there who are very much givers and know the joy of giving. And I I can tell you that when I first thought about service, I really wasn't that fond of it. I remember thinking, you know, I work 50, 60 hours a week. I I have young kids. I don't have time. Lord, you can't possibly be talking to me about this. But when I actually took the plunge and started giving of myself, God just gives an energy, just a joy that there comes from service that I have gotten from that more than I have ever gotten from anything else in life. And so as you make your plans for 2021, I hope you will ask God, ask God to help you be a little more Christ-centered Because might you remember that when there's doubt, remember that your God walked on water. Your God calmed the storm. Your God fed the 5,000. He made the deaf hear, the blind see, and the lame walk. Your God healed the sick, raised the dead, and your God can make the clean unclean, or the unclean clean. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. No.
Please rise as we join our voices together in confessing our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer for all of God's people, and especially for those in their hour of need. O Lord, Almighty God, into your hands we place ourselves. We give you our minds to know you, and our hearts to love you, and our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow in your steps. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord God, abide in us and enliven us by the power of your presence. We give you all that we have. Take us and fashion us after your image. Conform us to yourselves. Let your comfort strengthen and your grace renew us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, turn us away from ourselves individually that we may not be consumed for our own sake, but rather for yours. Cleanse us by the fire of your Holy Spirit, our souls and our bodies, in all things, so that we might be altogether yours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We especially give in to your loving care. All of those who are close to our hearts, and we pray for Susan, for Pat, Dieter, Sandy, and, and Carol. We ask your blessings upon Margie and Ron, Naoma, Stu, Dave, and Marilyn. Pour out your spirit, Lord, upon Sharon and Shirley, Robert, Christy, and Ken. Stay close to the side of Lily and Walker, Cade, Dylan, and Moni and give your peace to all of those who mourn the passing of our sister Margaret. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.